Good morning. My name is Evelyn Craighead, a slave of Jesus Christ, and I would like to welcome you to the Feeding House Ministries, a teaching ministry that focuses on your soul and your eternal destiny, a ministry that uncompromisingly teaches the truth of God's Word. And our scripture teaching this morning comes from Psalm 119, and I will be reading verses 129 through 136 from the New King James Version. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The entrance of your words gives light, it gives understanding to the simple. I opened my mouth and panted, for I longed for your commandments. Look upon me and be merciful to me, as your custom is toward those who love your name. Direct my steps by your word, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statues. Rivers of water run down from my eyes because men do not keep your law. My subject for this morning is God's life-changing words. When you realize just how life-changing God's word is, you will live in his word, but not only that, you will radically obey his word. Amen. In his second letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul summarized the life-changing power of God's Word in 2 Timothy chapter, 5, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. And that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, you are able to make, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Scripture has the power to totally transform our lives. Amen. It can take us from the depths of our lost and sinful lives and gradually change us mm -hmm. into mature and godly servants for the Lord. Amen. And in this division of Psalm 119, the author testifies about Scripture's ability to change lives. Mm -hmm. Through his statements about the Bible and his request in regard to the Bible, he reveals what God's Word has already done for him as well as what he still wants and needs God's Word to do. But before we can personally know the transforming power of God's mm -hmm. Word, we have to read it, study it, seek to understand it, believe it, obey it, and apply it to our lives. Amen. God's Word is sufficient for every need in our lives. And again, when you understand this, you will realize just how life-changing God's Word really is. Mm -hmm. Scripture says your testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, my soul keeps them. Acknowledge how wonderful God's word is and obey it. Amen. And wonder leads to obedience, but some people obey God's word for different reasons. Some obey because they fear punishment. Mm. Others obey to secure God's blessings, and still others obey because they love God and want to please Amen. God. And the psalmist stood in awe at the wonder of God's word, its harmony its beauty and perfection, its practicality, mm -hmm. power, and revelations. And the longer I read and study the Bible, God's life-changing words, the more wonderful it becomes. And a God who wrote a book that wonderful deserves my obedience. Amen. To obey the word of God is to become part of that wonder to experience power and spiritual transformation in our lives. Mm -hmm. And having experienced the power of Scripture in, in his own life, the psalmist acknowledged how wonderful God's Word is. 
And I can personally testify about the awe-inspiring wonders, miracles, curiosities, and phenomena of God's life-changing words because they are full of wonderful revelations, commands, and promises. God's life-changing words are wonderful in their nature because they set you free from all error. And God's life-changing words bear within themselves overwhelming self-evidence of their truth. God's life-changing words are wonderful in their effects in instructing, elevating, strengthening, and comforting the soul. Yes. And if you think about it, it's wonderful that God gave testimony to sinful man at all. Yes. And even more wonderful still is that his testimony would be of such character, so clear, so full, so gracious, so mighty. Thank you, Lord. Because God's word can bring about such amazing transformations, the psalmist eagerly declared that he obeyed his commands. He was a living testimony to the fact that God's word gives light and understanding to all who seek it. Mm -hmm. Scripture says the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. Entrance means unfolding, revealing, revelation, opening up. And God's life-changing words shows us how we are supposed to live and what we should do. His life-changing words leads to obedience yes. and understanding. Thus, the light of the word comes into our hearts and minds, bringing spiritual insight and understanding. When God opens up his word to us, the light of his truth shines forth and brings about spiritual transformation. Yes. It light, its light exposes the dangers of a sinful life but it also demonstrates the delights of the path of righteousness. Mm. It reveals the darkness of our corrupt human hearts and our need for God's salvation. It points the way to the cross yes. where we find the forgiveness and redemption we so desperately need. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6 says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. When we allow the way of the cross to guide us to salvation, mm -hmm. Scripture can completely change our lives. Amen. It teaches us, rebukes us, corrects us, and instructs us in righteousness. And through this glorious transformation, it gives understanding to the simple, yes. exposing our foolish ways and illuminating the way of wisdom. Amen. Scripture says, I opened my mouth and panted. For I longed for your commandments. Mm. The life-changing power of God's word and the joyful life it produces stirs a longing within us for the Lord's commands and understanding leads to a deeper desire. Just as a suffering, a suffocating person pants for air mm. or a thirsty person for water, so the child of God pants for the life-changing word of God and nothing else will satisfy Nothing else will fill that void, Amen. that emptiness. Yes. Job 23 verse 12 says, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. When we lose our desire for God's word, then we are vulnerable to the substitutes the world has to offer. Yes. And the psalmist confessed unashamedly that scripture had so gloriously inspired and affected him that he panted for more and more of God's word. Yes. Truly, God's holy word had become his substance, yes. the bread that satisfies his hungry soul. And if we study and obey God's word, it will satisfy our hungry souls. Amen. Matthew 4, verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. We seriously need to grasp just how wonderful God's word is and how blessed we are to have it. Amen. Luke 11 verse 28 says, But more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Through the word, God has given us a shining light that shows us not only the way to heaven, mm -hmm. but also the way to a life of happiness, 
joy, and peace. Yes. And it's unspeakably sad that so many professing believers prefer to feed their flesh on the unhealthy entertainment of this world mm -hmm. instead of nourishing their souls with the life-giving nourishments and nutrients of Scripture. Yes. Many people who claim to be born again have little, if any, appetite for God's Word. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, they can't get enough of television, movies, the internet, games, athletics, and other forms of entertainment. Now, this isn't to say that these things are sinful in and of themselves or that it's wrong to enjoy them. But when we spend so much of our time on these things mm. and so little of our time in God's word, we rob ourselves of the wonderful work God wants to do in us. Yes. In addition, we forfeit scripture's powerful effect mm. on our lives. Sadly, we deliberately choose to walk in the darkness of our own sinful nature rather than to walk in the light of God's word. Yes. And this leads to poor decisions, a lack of discernment and wisdom, a failure to know God's will, mm. and weakness when tempted. And as a result, we sacrifice the joy, peace, and happiness God wants us to have. Yes. We lack spiritual power. We fail to grow as believers, mm. and we don't bear fruit for the Lord. Amen. God's word can transform our lives, but only if we allow it to change us, Amen. only if we allow it to alter and convert us. We need to wholeheartedly devote our, ourselves to God's Word by reading it, studying it, memorizing it, and listening faithfully to those who teach and preach it, but more importantly, listening to those who obey it. Amen. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the Word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the Word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Amen. We need to live God's word just as he instructs us. And we need to pray for God to give us a greater love for his word, yes. an appetite for his word, appreciation for mm. his word, understanding of his word, and the desire to obey his yes. word. Scripture says, look upon me and be merciful as your custom is toward those who love your name. Pray for God's favor and mercy because God's life-changing word leads to desire and love for God. Amen. Just as children long to share the love of their parents, so the child of God experiences God's love through his life-changing word. Amen. And to love God's name is to love God mm -hmm. because his name reveals all that he is. And here the psalmist is claiming the covenant that the Lord gave to the nation of Israel. Had Israel loved the Lord and kept the terms of the covenant, God would have blessed them and exhibited to them his favor and mercy. Yeah. And still suffering persecution by the individuals who hated God's word, the psalmist asked God to look upon him and be merciful to him. And to look literally means to turn the face toward. Mm. It's a request for favor. Yes. To be merciful means to bend or stoop in kindness to an inferior person. Mm. And the Lord's servant wanted the Lord to see how desperately he needed his help. Amen. He needed God to show him favor, to bend down to him and to remind God that this was the way he had always treated those who loved his name. Yes. And God's name is the Lord. Yahweh, Jehovah, the one who makes a covenant with his people and faithfully keeps it. Throughout Israel's history, the Lord had never failed to help his people in their time of need. Amen. In light of that, the psalmist called on the Lord to be consistent and true to his name by helping him as well. Amen. And common sense should tell us that the primary way God ministers his mercy and help to us is through his word. Amen. Psalm 130 verse 5 says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I do hope. God's word, God's life-changing word, is the revelation of his truth to us. Amen. He speaks to us through his word. And as we read and study scripture, God imparts strength, comfort, Amen encouragement, and hope to our hearts. Amen. When we immerse ourselves in the Bible, listening for what God wants to say to us, His Spirit will open our understanding and guide us into God's truth. 
God's help is always available to his dear sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. But it's up to us to take advantage of his help by reading and studying his word. Amen. Joshua 1 verse 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Hallelujah. Scripture says, Direct my steps by your word, and let no iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from the oppression of man, that I may keep your precepts. Ask God to guide you by his word, because God's life-changing word leads to love, guidance, and freedom. Amen. When we experience the love of God in our hearts, we keep his commandments, and obedience to his commandments sets us free from the slavery of sin. Yes. And dominion means dictatorial rule. But sin isn't supposed to have dominion over us. But there's more. We're also set free from the oppression of people and the enslavement they can bring. Yes. When you're the servant of Jesus Christ, you're freed from the slavery of people. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 23 says, You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Amen. Remember the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And we can do like the psalmist. We can pray that God will guide us by his life-changing word. Amen. But the psalmist first asked God to direct his steps as he promised in his word. And if God would direct his steps, hmm. he would be protected from sin and its enslaving power. Amen. And he would be faithful to God's command, never falling into the bondage of sin. Yeah. Second, the psalmist asked God to redeem or deliver him from the oppression of man mm. that he may keep his precepts. Because of his faithfulness to God's word, he was being persecuted by arrogant people who despised God's laws. Mm. And so he asked God to set him free from their reproach, their insults once and for all, yes. so that he could focus completely on obeying his word, his life-changing word. Amen. In addition to helping us, and strengthening us, God also guides us through his word. Yeah. As scripture says in Psalm 119 verse 105, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Amen. In Jesus' model prayer, he instructed us to pray that God would lead us away from temptation mm -hmm. and deliver us from evil. And God does this through his word. Amen. God's word clearly and faithfully shines the light on the way of sin. God's word exposes and identifies what's sinful. God's word teaches us what's right and how to do what's right. Yeah. God's word gives us the strength to overcome our sinful desires yeah. and to do what's right. Amen. God's word guides us in God's will for our lives and God's word protects us from Satan's attacks by defeating Satan and his evil forces when they rise up to tempt and defeat us. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Amen. If we faithfully follow God's word, we will never become slaves to sin. Amen. Because God's word will guide us in the way we should go, mm -hmm. protecting us from <laughs> Satan's traps. But again, we must read God's word. Mm -hmm. We must study God's word. Yeah. We must memorize God's word. Yeah. Obey God's word and apply God's word to our lives. Hallelujah. Scripture says, make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Rivers of water run down from my eyes because men do not keep your law. Seek God's face. Seek his presence for a closer relationship with him. Because God's life-changing words brings freedom in Christ and God's blessings to us. Mm -hmm. And to seek his face is to seek his blessings. Yes. As we walk with the Lord in freedom, we walk in the light and we have nothing to hide. But enjoying his freedom and blessing doesn't eliminate the burden we carry of the wickedness in the world. Mm. Because a broken heart and a blessed heart can exist in the same person at the same time. Mm. Jeremiah wept over the sins of a nation that was about to be destroyed. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they had rejected him. 
And the Apostle Paul wept over lost souls mm. as well as professed believers in the church who were living for the world and the flesh. Yes. If our enjoyment of God's word and God's gracious blessings have truly reached our hearts, then we ought to have a burden for the loss and a desire to reach them for Christ. Yes. When God hides his face from his people, he's disciplining us. Mm. But the shining of his face on us is a sign of his blessing. Amen. And the Lord's servant prayed that God would bless him or show him favor by teaching him his word. Amen. Psalm 21 verse 6 says, For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. By taking the psalmist deeper into scripture, God would draw him into a closer relationship with him, giving him a sense of his strong presence. Mm -hmm. And the psalmist longed for this special touch from the Lord. His heart was broken because so many people around him had rebelled against God's holy word. Mm -hmm. And his grief was so great that he described his tears as rivers flowing from his eyes. Yeah. He longed for God to know how broken hearted he was and he needed God to soothe his soul with a sense of his presence and the comforting truths of his word. Yeah. And if you think about it, one of the greatest blessings of God's word is its power to draw us into a closer relationship with God. Amen. Above all else, God has revealed himself to us through his word. Yeah. He has told us who he is, mm. what his name is, what he's like, and how much he loves us. Amen. We know God through his word. Amen. And what a privilege, what an honor it is that the God of the universe loves and wants a mm. personal relationship with each one of us. If we will just commune with God through his word, he will speak to us and reveal himself to us. And more than anything else, mm -hmm. we need the strength that comes only through God's presence to help us through the trials, yes. challenges, and disappointments in life. We all need a special touch from the Lord. Yes. That special touch that will enable us to endure even the deepest grief imaginable. Psalm 23, 4 says, Yea, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If we will open God's word and read it prayerfully with an open mind mm -hmm. and an eager heart, God speaks to us. Amen. He will touch us. We will feel his comforting presence and we will hear his assuring voice. When you realize how life-changing God's word really is, you will acknowledge how wonderful God's word is and obey it. And God's word gives light and understanding to all who seek it. It shows us how to live and what to do. God's word stirs a longing in you for his commands, and obeying his commands satisfies your soul, yeah. your life. So pray for God's favor and mercy, mm -hmm. because you need his help and because he helps all those who love him. Ask God to guide you by his word. Mm -hmm. Ask him to protect you from sin and its power to enslave you. Ask God to deliver you from all the oppressors so you can focus on obeying his word. Amen. And seek God's face. Mm -hmm. Seek his presence so you can have a closer relationship with him. Seek his face so he can teach you his life-changing yes. word. And seek his face so that you will know how so that he will know how heartbroken you are because so many people rebel against the holy, yes. life-changing word of God. I can't preach this message without giving my own testimony of just how life-changing God's word has been in my life. Amen. I live the life that I live because of God. I never could have known this life apart from God's word. I am who I am and I have what I have because of God's word. His life-changing word. John chapter 1 verse 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Anytime we see word capitalized in the Bible, it's speaking of Jesus. Jesus changed my life. He taught me how to live for him through his life-changing word. He's the reason for my salvation. Mm. He died to pay my sin debt. Yeah. He has given me the gift of discernment to know when it's him and when it's Satan. And as he taught me with his life-changing word, mm -hmm. I prayed for his strength to help me to obey it. I asked God for one thing, love, and my life has never been the same. 
God said when I asked for love, I was asking for him, mm. and he gave me himself. And then I heard his instruction to study. As I studied, he gave me his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He gave me love and joy and peace. He gave me security. He adopted me into his family. He's my father, my king, my savior, my redeemer, Hallelujah. my comforter, my healer, my provider, my protector, my guide, my life, my everything. Yes. He's the very breath I breathe. I live and have my being in him. He set me free from the bondage of sin and people by his life-changing word. And even though I'm the recipient of this blessed life, it's almost incomprehensible to yes. me that God would bless me in such abundance. But this is what God's life-changing word will do for anyone who will love and obey him. And I love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. Amen. I've tasted and seen just how good he really is. And I don't ever want to be separated from him again. He's my everything. All because his word Jesus changed my life. So why not submit your life to God? Mm. Only then will you realize just how life-changing His Word really is. Amen? Amen. Our dear, precious, and heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your Word today. I pray that your life-changing Word will change the hearers' lives today, Father God. That they would receive your truth and surrender their lives to your Son, Jesus Christ. You truly are our everything, and everything we've ever needed, wanted, or desired is found in Jesus. But to know this, we must study and meditate on your word. We must live in your word, but not only that, we must obey your word. Father God, let us be beacons of light for you in this lost and dying world, that when the world sees us, they really see your son Jesus, and they may ask the reason for our joy and our love and our peace. Thank you, Father God, for all that you do in us, for us, and through us. We just want to make a difference for heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.